Hey everyone, we're here with Jordan Griffin. Jordan is a featherweight in the UFC and fought this last weekend at UFC Fight Night 169 against TJ Brown. With that submission victory, he was able to win a Performance of the Night award, making him 50K richer. We're going to start off. How are you doing today after letting the weekend settle in? Oh, I'm doing amazing. I'm happy I got back home safe. And uh, yeah, I, I slept good last night. Does it uh, feel any different being uh, 50K richer? Man, uh, you know what? I don't feel any different. I, I feel I feel very grateful, um, and I don't want anything to change. Uh, my coaches even said they said, you know, just just you have your jobs back home. Just get back to work. You know, this is your break. You get a chance to get ahead, and uh, I'm just gonna get back to the grind. So I feel I feel great. Uh, just a second ago, you were telling me that after this, you're actually heading back to uh, your regular job. You're not taking any breaks off. You're going straight back in. Yeah, I got some people that want to come in. They want to get some activations done at T-Mobile today. And so I hit my, my uh, manager up, Carlos, and I was like, hey, can I pop in for a second and get this done? He's like, of course. He's like, you're not going to take a break? I was like, no, nah, man, I got money. I got to make this money. So now that the hard part's over, is there anything uh, that you have planned for the future? Um, you know, it, it, it's I've been talking about making that move to uh, 155, but uh, after this last weight cut, which went like really well, um, obviously I'm going to be, you know, sticking around the 145 division, but if I can tiptoe my way into, into the 55 division with the right matchup, I'd like to do that. And then uh, just continue to train, continue to get better, and there's some things I want to work on, so I'm, I'm excited. Um, coming into this fight, was there, there anything on your mind, uh, mentally or anything that you were overthinking or? That was my problem. I was overthinking before I was thinking too much, you know, I was trying to be perfect. And, uh, I think I really went back to my roots, man. I just went out there. I put the mean face on, I stared him down from across the cage and I didn't take my eyes off my opponent. And, um, yeah, I, I just got the win. All I want to do is finish every single fight. I want to finish. Now you going to to what you were just talking about going back to your roots. Can you can you kind of explain that a little bit? Uh, just that mentality, man. That mean dude. We're kind of fighting. It's either me or you. I'm fighting for my food here. You know what I mean. I'm fighting for my life. And uh, you know, to, and that night, um, this week, last weekend in Norfolk, UFC Norfolk, I was fighting for my job. So you know, to be able to to secure my job, to be able to get the fifty thousand uh, dollars bonus, to be able to. To progress, man. This is gonna be. This is huge for me. I just gotta um, spend this money the right way, uh, take care of myself, um, healthy, be healthy, men mentally and physically, and uh, go get my son. Take care of my son, and and man, I'm happy, man. All this means is more time with my family and more time in the gym. So I can, you know, the gym's family too. So it just means I get to spend more time with people that I love, you know. So talking about your family and how you're fighting for your job. Um, I saw that you, you wrote a check to yourself on yeah. February 1st of... Yeah, I wrote a check, man. It was uh, it was like, um, dude, I've been doing this for... for I've been a pro since 20, 2011, and I've had a lot of like ups and downs, man. I'm so happy to be here. I was one in three. I'm so grateful to be here, and I was grateful Dana White gave me the opportunity to, to uh, you know, to be in the UFC. Um, and uh, but you know on the first I said I was going, getting back to to my old mentality I was just like that just mean dude I was fucking, they said my name they said Nate so I, I went Woo! Mm -hmm. I was fucking dude I was I was pumped but I wrote this check and I actually forgot that I wrote the check I put it in my wallet and it said uh, the and it says for the right the checks written for getting your son and the right to be a father uh, buying your first home and for never giving up uh, and uh, yeah I do that. I never gave up, never doubted myself, and uh, I'm happy to be here. So, in this fight, do you, do you feel you made the right adjustments coming into this fight against uh, T.J. Brown? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, I think, you know, he was. I think I I did everything right. I mean, I'm not. I've just really accepted who I am in like the MMA, and and I think it's continuously changing. Um, I was the ground and pound guy when I first started out, and I'm like, then people say, oh, you're a striker. They were saying I'm a submission specialist, <laughs> and Professor Wanderlei goes, well, hey man, how many knockouts you got? I was like five. He's like, how many submissions you got now? I was like nine. He's like, you're a submission specialist. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool, cool. But uh, yeah, just uh, just constantly evolving and and trying to get better. Was there anything in the fight that maybe in the future you feel that you're going to have to work on or just my my entrance 
Um, coming in and closing that distance and maintaining that closed distance, I tend to pop in, boom, 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 and I slip back out, uh, which it works, you know, it works, that works too, but I think for me, where I want my game to go is I wanna get in, I wanna stay in, I want that inside dirty boxing, I want those trips, I want those elbows, I like the clinch, and then, you know, I always just stay off the ground. Um, but it, it, it was cool to see, like, he got me on the ground. I kept getting back up right away. So it's, it's cool. You know, I spent, you know, damn near, you know, I spent a good amount, like six months working with, or even more than that, working with uh, Rafian Stotts. He's a two-time NCAA champion, wrestling champion. He's over at Bellator. But I spent, you know, a lot of time with him and working with uh, one of his students, Aiden, uh, who also wrestles and, and competed. So... Um, so I spent a lot of time with them and it paid off, you know, I got off the ground, I was able to transition and get into other things and, and progress the fight instead of staying planted on the ground. So, so speaking of the fight a little bit, can you give us a walkthrough on, on the fight and uh, where you feel that you started to take over and uh, to make it your, your fight? I just noticed he was constantly going for the head, he kept shooting in for the double leg. And uh, his thing is he just goes, he he goes, if you look at his past record, he just goes so hard that first round. Um, going into that second round, they were like, he's gassed, he's tired. And I was just like, okay, cool. So we went back out there, it was the same thing. He kept going for the single leg, he kept giving me his neck deep. I mean, I had his neck deep every single time he, he shot into my legs. So I was almost at a point where I was just welcoming him in there. And uh, it was it was good, but all I could think is like, if I can't finish him, it's done. Like I need to finish this dude. I need to you know, I need to put him out. So when when I had it in there real deep like that, and I held it, I actually stopped squeezing and I just held it there. And I was waiting for the judge to just like like hey, like you know I'm done. I'm not letting go until you tell me. So and I flopped him over. I didn't even know he was out like that. I thought he was just you know kind of out, but they he was. He was gone, man. So, so um, were you able to to watch your fight replays and uh, the the commentators talking about how it was an unusual an unusual position uh, for someone to to get a victory like that? Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? And um, do you see yourself maybe catching another person in that anytime soon? Yeah, I feel like I'm just gonna continue working on my jujitsu. Uh, and uh, working with Rafian and working with Professor and working on my striking. And um, I feel like those submissions are what's gonna make me, it's gonna make me stand out in the, in the, you know, in the division pretty much. If you look at any of my other fights, I've had crazy submissions like that too. And I feel like now that I'm in the UFC, if I can bring those other submissions, I have a bunch of tricks, you know, and if I can just show, showcase those on the big show, man, i am be making that paper. <laughs> so, now now getting this win do you you have any plans for the future do you have anyone you're eyeing out in your division uh no not yet i mean it, I, it's it's nice you know I, I i really not yet i just need to build my way back up so i mean i got this win i'd like to go on a steady win streak um build you know just build myself up and then you know whoever they offer every person in the ufc is hard so whoever they give me i'm just gonna i'm gonna watch the video we're gonna talk about it with the coaches and then i'm just gonna prepare for that person and uh you know get a couple wins in then we can start talking about top 10 in the world and stuff like that so hopefully i can get at least two more fights in this year i got an earlier fight in you know it's march you know what i mean so if i can get two more fights in in 2020 or three that'd be crazy uh i'd be i'd be happy with that but you know, I just, I'm always going for the finish. I don't want any of those decisions. All right. So uh, b previously before this, uh, before we started recording, you were talking about in the future, you're, you're planning on running uh, your own YouTube channel. You want to kind of explain what, what your purpose is there and what you plan on doing with that? So after I made to the UFC, um, you know, I, I, I think like jujitsu a lot for saving my career. Um, you know, I was one in three when I started. I got nine submission wins, man. And um, I, when I first started out, I was a submission wrestler. I didn't even know what jujitsu was. I was told it was called submission wrestling. And uh, once I jumped in the gi and I started really learning what was up, my, my just started winning. I started finishing everything. Things got easier. And um, after I got into the UFC, I came back to Rufus Sport and I asked Duke Rufus and Professor Wander, I said, hey, can I, can I help teach jujitsu? Because I just wanted to learn more. I wanted to be on the mats. I wanted to teach people. And, and I wanted to learn while I'm teaching people how to adjust different body types, um, different moves, uh, different transitions in and out. 
And so I've been able to do that over this last year, very thankful. Um, unfortunately, I lost my UFC fights and that was kind of a distraction, but I still focused on my studying because this is a job I studied, studied, studied. And um, now I'd like to start a YouTube channel called Professor's Assistant. So, you know, my name is Jordan Griffin, AKA Native Psycho. And I'm here at Combat Corner and I'd like to start something called uh, Professor's Assistant on YouTube later on this month. All right, big thanks to Jordan Griffin for coming in and sitting down with us and going over his uh, fantastic victory over the weekend. Uh, be sure to keep your eyes peeled for upcoming sponsored athlete fight news and videos. Also, make sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts at Combat Corner Professional on Facebook and YouTube, as well as Combat Corner on Instagram and Twitter.